Well, welcome to the fifth commandment, honour your father and your mother, that it may be well with you, that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. That's verse 12 of chapter 20 of Exodus. So I think it's fair to say that honouring one's parents would never make it into a modern top 10 commandments, not in Europe or North America anyway. Go back to the early, early 20th century here in Britain and it undoubtedly would. Maybe that's because of residual biblical influence here. But today in Asia and Africa, who don't have centuries of Christian history, well, they would still vote for the fifth commandment. And that's over three quarters of the world's population. So we here are the odd ones out. Does that mean that it's just an ancient cultural relic that no longer has real value. So I think it's more valuable than ever. And here are the reasons. Primarily, honouring our parents is a question of moral debt. Every generation stands on the shoulders of the one before, and to that extent, each one has a debt, owes a debt, to the preceding one because your generation whichever one it is is not better than your predecessors you owe the previous generation this is of course especially true of your parents who fed you wiped your bottom dried your tears provided a taxi service counseled you tolerated you when you had no manners no sense of hygiene and no volume control it's a basic matter of justice to honour our parents. And across much of the world today and across time measured in millennia, parents have been dependent upon the financial support of their children. Now, currently in the West, that's less the case because of state pensions, but these are being steadily eroded and eventually it may become go full circle. However, Laying aside finance, aged parents often, in fact it's the rule, become ultimately physically and sometimes emotionally dependent upon their children. They easily feel abandoned, they get lonely, they become afraid of their, because of their physical decline. At that point, it's time for some of that debt to be repaid with God's explicit approval. Now, I know things are not always straightforward. Parents are human. They can prioritise their own needs ahead of the children's, often unconsciously. They can, at times, be manipulative and controlling. They may wound through favouritism. They may, in some cases, neglect their children by their absence or by incapacity caused by things like substance abuse. And occasionally it even extends to beatings and sexual abuse. So how do you honour this? Well, under such circumstances, the answer is with difficulty and much struggling with forgiveness. Although it does help to understand that we ourselves are not angelic either. But what does honouring mean in practice? Yes, it's about a respectful attitude, but attitudes always, in some way or other, lead to actions. And honouring is more relates to actions than anything else. Like visiting, taking a watchful, compassionate interest. And we can do that even if they weren't a model parent, paragons of parental virtue. And as Paul points out in Ephesians 6, 1, honour your parents is the first, or well, actually only, commandment with a promise attached. It's ambiguous, actually, perhaps deliberately, because to the ancient Israelites, it, it linked this command with tenure of the land, live long in the land, that means of Israel. Perhaps it's also a promise of longevity. But if we are privileged to have children, perhaps the biggest reward 
is that our example to our children will be copied when it's our turn to be old and frail and afraid. God is, after all, a God of justice. Have a news.